Hello again. Today we're going to make coffee wine. And you will see that ours will be made from fresh ground coffee beans. But you can also make yours from pre-ground coffee. We've also chosen a flavoured coffee bean that we like, but you can use whichever ground coffee you choose. Prior to starting, let's see what equipment we will need. For the initial fermentation, we're going to use a two gallon bin with a sealable lid, a set of scales, some measuring spoons, and a two pint measuring jug. All the equipment needs to be sterilized, and for this, we've used a Camden tablet and water solution. To make a gallon of wine, which is equivalent to six bottles, the ingredients you will need are half a pound of fresh ground coffee, two and a half pounds of muscovados sugar and a sauterne wine yeast. The additives are a quarter of a teaspoon of grape tannin, one three mil vitamin B1 tablet, one teaspoon of yeast nutrient and a teaspoon and a half of citric acid. We will show all these ingredients and additives at the end of this video, so don't worry about having to note everything down at this point. For all our recipes, we like to use a yeast starter, and this one will be made using orange juice. Firstly, as you can see, there are six pints of water in the pan, to which we are going to, or I am going to add, Two and a half pounds of sugar. Now you must stir to make sure that the sugar is dissolved. And now have to bring this to boiling point. The sugar mixture is now at boiling point and I've just turned down the heat. Next step is to stir in the coffee and bring it back to boiling point once that's been done. That liquid is now back to boiling point and the heat is turned off. The last step at this stage is to remove the pan from the heat, cover and allow it to cool for 24 hours until the yeast starter is ready, which of course will be tomorrow. Here we are, 24 hours later. Now that the coffee in the bin has cooled down, we need to pour the coffee through a fine strainer into the jar.
Now that the straining is complete and still enough space in the top of the jar for the yeast starter, we need now to pour this content of the jar into the two gallon bin. Now we add the additives, which are a quarter of a teaspoon of grape tannin, One three milligram vitamin B1 tablet, which we, as usual, crush between two spoons. One teaspoon of yeast nutrient. and a teaspoon and a half of citric acid. And now, we can add the yeast starter, and when this is in, a slight stir to the mixture. That is now complete and we must leave this bin in a warm place to ferment for the next four days. Hello again. Here we are four days later as we said. And the fermentation has been continuous until today when we will pour the coffee wine from the bin through a fine filter bag into a clean gallon jar, which I shall now do. Now, having done that, I will top up with water, which is necessary, as you see, fit an airlock and leave to ferment to completion.
At this stage, we do not know what the final gravity will be. So, we will wait for 14 days, take a second gravity reading then. Hello again. It is now five weeks since we strained the wine into this gallon jar and there are no bubbles through the airlock. We must now check the specific gravity of the wine to confirm that fermentation is complete. To do this we need a hydrometer and a clear trial jar. We now siphon some of the wine from the gallon jar into the trial jar and take a reading with the hydrometer. To take a reading, we lower the hydrometer into the jar and spin it gently. If the reading shows a specific gravity of a thousand or less, then the fermentation is probably complete. So let's just check the, the reading. That reading is 996. The reading is, as I just say, 996. Therefore, the fermentation is complete. We now add the powder equivalent of one Camden tablet to the gallon jar and we shall now leave this for 24 hours before racking into another jar. Here we are 24 hours later and our job today is to siphon the wine from this jar into this clean jar using plastic tubing and a siphon tube attachment. This draws the wine downwards into the tube here rather than sucking the sediment up from the bottom. Having completed that siphoning, we need to top up this jar with cold water to compensate for the sediment that was left in the bottom of the other jar. And now fit a board cork plugged with cotton wool, which will allow any gas to escape should there be gas in there 
and now we must put this jar into a cold location which will help it to clear and start maturing. This will happen normally without any further assistance from us. The, the wine shouldn't have any more sediment but if a heavy sediment does appear then the wine needs to be re-racked and then left to settle.